giving everyone the benefit of the doubt because we all deserve that you know and so starting out there but you know if you see a, a pattern or um even you know you know linkedin you mentioned the content you know linkedin is the only social platform i've ever been on and just kind of whether it's online or offline when you are constantly getting that same negative energy you know that noise just to like just block it like as you're creating content and you're gaining the right positive attention to create those relationships those meaningful relationships you want them to know you like you and trust you and um doing the hashtag communication and just searching a little bit um on linkedin and i googled and and um but it was really online and uh, and yeah she's become wow that connection has just really changed my whole world because that opportunity led to so many others um so yes i'm grateful for lila and and that is um the power of networking <laughs> and that's next on bootstrapping your dreams show so the big question is this how are ambitious people like us who don't have a lot of resources did not go to ivy league colleges were not born into wealth how do we become resourceful enough use our creativity our dedication and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams whether it is launching a new company launching a new app or making it to the top of the corporate ladder that is the question and this podcast will give you the answers hey listeners and viewers we have created a tremendous community of bootstrappers entrepreneurs and professionals who are ambitious, resourceful and want to get things done. We brainstorm, support and help each other out. Come join us. Navigate to bootstrapping.group. That is bootstrapping.group. If you like this video, do not forget to hit that like button now. Or if you want us to improve our content, go ahead and hit the thumbs down button. and give us your feedback in the comment section below here at tetra noodle we are passionate about entrepreneurship technology and innovation every week we bring you insightful and engaging interviews tips tricks and strategies to help you grow your business or rise in your corporate profession so if you are new here please consider subscribing and do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we publish new content hello and welcome to this new episode of bootstrapping your dreams show i'm your host manoj agarwal and today we'll be talking with amber p so amber is the founder of granola grown a home grown company born with an aim of making special recipes that are beneficial to all including those with allergies sensitivities and autoimmune disorders that can be troubled by troubled by nuts gluten or dairy products amber is also a speaker of a moment to moment faith where she shares her insights on how to grow out of life challenges how to say no to depression and how to turn your strength into a more positive action she is a sh- social media marketer content creator business strategist and a relationship builder Let's welcome Amber. Amber, uh, we are so excited to have you here. I am thrilled to be here. It's an honor to get a chance to speak with you, and uh, thank you for inviting me to your show. Awesome. So, uh, just so that we can get to know you better, can you tell us a, a little bit about how you got started, your life story, your experiences? Oh wow, that's a loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> But uh, well, yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Um, goodness, so. born and raised in South Carolina uh always been just myself and my dad uh we moved often and we ended up here didn't envision myself back here uh even though I enjoyed it immensely um but I ended up back here in Clayton North Carolina and so that's where I reside now I went to NC State for undergrad I moved to San Antonio, Texas and lived there for a little bit over 3 years and enjoyed every moment there um but knew that you know once I was ready to start a family we'd come back here and and so here I am um I now have a 9-year-old daughter and an almost 2-year-old so um life is interesting and very full 
very uh-huh. imperfect. Imper- you know, definitely every day is completely different um, from the yeah. last. And uh, so, but just, you know, enjoying the moments of every day. Awesome. awesome. Uh, so um, tell us about your entrepreneurial journey. How did you get started with your company? And, you know, you being a, a mother of two. And as you said, like you've been moving around. Uh, it seems like it's not an easy task to think of a company, launch a company, grow it. So how did you do it? Yes. Thank you for asking. You know, I was very patient with myself. You know, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with that. So I didn't want to do something just to do it. Um, I wanted to be meaningful. So, you know, harnessing that idea actually took a little bit longer for me than actually getting started with the business itself. Um, But I wanted to make it meaningful and have that passion. And I was able to do that. It was one of those unexpected moments, actually, I was with my, as I mentioned, my nine-year-old who she was two at the time and she was helping me make granola in the kitchen. It was a complete mess, like oats all out the bowl. And, but it was in that moment that I was inspired by her to make granola. You know, I, it's just, she inspired me. I knew the granola had to be good. Actually, we were making it because it was requested from um, our family members. Um, and so we made it often. And, and so that's really where it started. I wanted to create something for her. If she chose to go down that, that path, you know, I felt good about giving her that choice. And um, I'm very health conscious. So I felt wonderful about the, you know, all natural ingredients. And it just grew from there. You know, I, I was clueless as to the steps and how to get started. And, and now looking back, I wish I would have reached out to the experts more instead of trying to figure it all out on my own. Um, that would have saved a, a lot of time and, um, and sleep. Definitely would have been less all-nighters um, early on. Uh, but, you know, you figure all that out as you go. And so that's really been the journey is starting out as a one woman show doing it all from, you know, making the ingredients, you know, getting them, making it, delivering it, selling it, um, building relationships and, and to partnering with the right people to help you to make it sustainable and scalable so that you can do much bigger things with that, um, to be able to give back more generously, um, which is the bigger mission here. Awesome. That's great. Well, you forgot your uh, uh, partner there. You know, it was not a one-woman show, if I can correct you there. Uh, <laughs> but it's an interesting story. A two-year-old inspiring you to launch business. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, now, uh, you know, we have this huge problem of allergies and, and uh, you know, people suffering from uh, these uh, dietary restrictions. So uh, was that uh, also an inspiration from uh, personal experience of yours or... Uh, how did that come about? You know, it's interesting because that also evolved over time. When I first started out, I personally don't have any that, that I know of, nor did my daughter at the time, but it was through her school. Um, I would make a lot of treats and bring them in and they're like, oh, you can't include, you know, nuts or strawberries even and different things. And I started realizing, wow, this is a real thing. And um, what really made it clue in is I was doing uh, demos at Whole Foods at the time. I used to um, be at Whole Foods and that was the number one question. Is this gluten free is what I kept hearing over and over. And so that was something that was at the time, which years ago, five years ago now. Um, but I really listened to that, just listening to the feedback and and actually doing something about it. So it originally was not gluten-free, but it is now. And I, I originally had sliced almonds in it. So I removed the almonds. Um, so now it's, you know, nut-free, um, gluten-free, everything free, dairy-free. It's kosher and it's really delicious. <laughs> so uh, it, it just evolved over time. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so, you know, w- uh, when I talk to you, when I read your content online on social media posts and things like that, you come across as a very passionate, very kind, uh, very humble person. So has that uh, played a role? Uh, has your personality played a role in your business and growing it? Absolutely. Yes. In massive ways, just, you know, I'm very grounded in my faith and I always have been, again, a very imperfect spiritual journey <laughs> that I've been on. Um, but I have always, my, my dad, he, he is very, uh, very humble and honest 
man. And so I'm very grateful and fortunate to have been raised by him. Um, so he instilled all that early on and, you know, a combination of just relying on my faith, my, my inner strength, you know, and realizing that, Hey, you know, kind of like you said, it really wasn't a woman -woman show. I rely on him for everything to get me through to the other side. And then once you do make it through, you look back and realize, Hey, I made it through that. And so, you know what, I can do anything with him on my side. And so just remembering that and, and knowing that, you know, these moments are just temporary, you know, and they're all serving a bigger purpose. And so just remembering all those things. Um, and so, you know, God, my dad and my granddad actually were my, my mentors, my heroes, but, you know, fill in the blank, they were everything to me. And, and so starting very early on and, and just remembering that and staying grounded in that and, um, and, and just being kind. I know it sounds so simple, but um, yeah, it really, I tell my daughter that now. I'm like, you, you only be kind to everyone. You can't lose that way, you know? And, and so um, it's just, it really, it's that, when you have that serving heart, it really does, it's this light in you that even in your worst moments, it still comes out and then you get it back. Because when you give, you, you really do truly get it back. And, um, again, it's very imperfect for me. I have my challenges every single day, but getting through them, that, that helps me to get through them and, and to stay grounded in that kindness and stay humble and realize, Hey, we, we're all facing these challenges and, and need, uh, need that guidance to get us through. For sure. For sure. I mean, these are, these are great qualities to have. And as you put it, like, you know, the, the more, you give, um, you get uh, tenfold back. Uh, you know, really do. <laughs> but but let me ask you: it can you know it can backfire as well because people um, some people are not nice. They take advantage of you if you're uh, you know if you're nice and uh, and kind. Uh, did you run into those type of issues as well? You know. I, yes, the short answer, of course, yes, you, you do face that. And it's really just knowing the difference. And so just starting out giving, giving everyone the benefit of the doubt, because we all deserve that, you know, and so starting out there, but you know, if you see a, a pattern or um, even you know, you know, LinkedIn, you mentioned the content, you know, LinkedIn is the only social platform I've ever been on. And just kind of whether it's online or offline, when you are constantly getting that same negative energy, you know, that noise, just to like, just block it, like just ignore it. And, and again, start with giving it the benefit of the doubt, like, okay, maybe they're just having a bad day or maybe they need some extra love, you know, maybe that's what they're really saying because, because yeah, really that, that's what it is, you know, that exactly. when people are unkind, it's, they have things going on, right. As we, we all do at different phases. So when it's something consistent, you know, um, whether it's even, you know, it's very hard sometimes with even relationships, you know, that you've created over years even. But if it's something that, to your point, where it's just, you know, unkind and maybe even abusive in some ways, you know, verbally, different ways, um, it's no one deserves that. And you do have to cut it off, block it, ignore it, whatever it takes to focus your energy on the positive so that you could keep you know, regenerating that positive energy back into other purposes. Yeah, I know uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, I think you raised a very good point that if somebody's acting out, somebody's, uh, you know, spewing negative energy, I think uh, it's more to do with them. They may be having a bad day. They may be going through some pain. Uh, so as you, as you grow, you can understand people much better. And then uh, instead of getting, uh, you know, sort of angry at them, mad at them, you can empathize with them and sort of, you know, uh, right. send some positive energy their way. Um, all right. So now let's talk about your um, your company. Were you a passionate cook already? So uh, you know, you you said that you were um, you were uh, making granola for family members. So I take yes. it that you had a cooking background already, or did you have? Uh, <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, so growing up, it was just me and my dad. So being raised by a man, 
we survived on TV dinners and not the good kind. It was like buy four for one dollar <laughs> kind of TV dinners. I think, you know, I think they've come a long way now. I actually refuse to eat TV frozen dinners now because of that. Um, and I'm not too picky of an eater, but um, but yeah, so going from that and always eating out, um, definitely not. My dad maybe cooked one homemade meal a year and maybe with spaghetti, you know, so it wasn't even that. Um, but just early on, you know, going into college, you can only survive off of ramen noodles or egg sandwiches and things so much. So it came out of necessity. I, you know, I just, I don't like unhealthy food all the time. And, and so I needed, I just started looking up recipes and experimenting and through that, I loved it. I just, I wasn't expecting to love cooking. I just, I have a creative spirit in me. And so it was just really fascinating for me to take these ingredients, put them together and you can make something and it tasted really good. And so um, I was just fascinated by, you know, just creating something out of nothing nothing actually. And, and then I was really just growing myself. I'm like, well, well, I can make this even better next time. And so I started writing notes down and, and um, I love cooking. I cook all the time. So it's a huge passion for me. i um, just cooking for my family and neighbors and making extra batches and giving it to them. But um, yes, I definitely, unfortunately, did not have anyone to teach me <laughs> these recipes. And so I'm making sure I'm doing that now with my daughters. So. Awesome. That's great. Yes. Uh, you know, finding your passion uh, just out of necessity and turning into a business, that's an amazing story. And uh, you, you cook for, uh, for your neighbors as well. Uh, you know, it's, yes. I'm tempted to move into your neighborhood. <laughs> We have a couple of homes for sale, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sure uh, it's maybe someday. Um, all right, so, uh, you know, apart from cooking, there's a whole bunch of other things that go into entrepreneurship, marketing, sales, operations. Um, yes. How did you learn all that stuff? And uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe you made some mistakes along the way. How, you know, tell us how did it all uh, come about? Yes. Well, I'm still making mistakes. You know, I'm still learning. I haven't, I don't have it all figured out. I'm, I will never claim to be the marketing or sales expert. Um, but what I am doing is I'm listening. Um, so it's all about, you know, experimenting and listening and then taking that, that feedback. Like with the gluten-free is a good example. You know, I was listening to that and had I not done that, I would have absolutely missed out on a lot of opportunities. Um, so that, you know, I have reached out to experts to help me in this area actually. And, you know, as far as building that relationship, I think that is key because that is what is going to last. So even when it comes to, you know, creating content, you know, I think it, the thing right now is saying, you know, content is the new currency. And so as you're creating content and you're gaining the right positive attention to create those relationships, those meaningful relationships, you want them to know you, like you and trust you. And, and so that's really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm focusing more on the foundation and building those meaningful connections and relationships and even you know instead of creating these mass huge groups um i've just recently something i've recently done is just created a very small uh, intimate group with like-minded people um to help each other you know it's definitely a two-way support and and so you know i think what it always comes down to also is is satisfying a need so as long as you're satisfying a need that your audience has through an innovative idea, um, that's where it starts. But yeah, so as far as like the sales tricks, you know, um, I, I, I think it's quality over quantity. And, okay. but again, I'm not the expert here. I'm not claiming to be, but that's what I have found when I have had my successes. That's what I attribute it to is, is creating that quality first. You mentioned that there are, uh, you reached out to some experts for help. How did you uh, find these experts? Were they local experts or do you found them online? How did you connect with them? Uh, because a lot of uh, people in our audience, they are at the same stage. They're looking for help. And, you know, sometimes they get puzzled. Like, you know, who, how do I reach out to these people? How do I vet them? How do I make a relationship with them? So how did you do it? 
Yes, that's a great question. And it was almost, um, it was just so natural, actually. And the, the best example that I can give, and she's become a dear friend now, is um, I'm sure you've heard of Lila Smith, um, the creator of Say Things Better. Ooh. And a very specific example is I was, um, I was writing a proposal for Granola Grown, actually for Disney which is a dream client of mine. And, uh, and I, it had to be perfect, you know, and I know I am good, maybe not great at communications. And I just noticed, I kept seeing her name in post and it wasn't even so much just her posting. It was her commenting on other people's mm -hmm. posts and I just really appreciated her like the positive energy so I, I again like the like no like and trust that's really what it was for me is you just find people that you want to work with that's one of the great perks of being an entrepreneur is you can choose who you work with and and I really like what Lila had to offer and so I just reached out and um, so yeah I just kept seeing her name and and you know how it is when you have an immediate need that's when you start really looking and so I just started um, doing the hashtag communication and just searching a little bit um, on LinkedIn and I googled and and um, but it was really online and uh, and yeah she's become wow that connection has just really changed my whole world because that opportunity led to so many others um, so yes I'm grateful for Lila and and that is um, the power of networking. <laughs> So it seems like uh, LinkedIn has been a great platform for you to connect with people and sort of spread the message. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I, I can't say enough great things about LinkedIn and, um, and even taking it offline. I was able to this past Friday um, meet a, a close friend um, at a museum with our children. And so we made, you know, we combined the family time. We collaborated on business as well. And um, created a video and posted it and, and so just encouraging others, you know, but then all that we have going on to not let that busyness stop us from chasing our dreams and and yeah. so um, Yeah, just taking those off those online relationships offline as well That's great. So now um, I've heard I've been hearing a lot of things about LinkedIn I joined back in 2005, but I think it LinkedIn has changed uh, dramatically over over the past few years how did you, when did you start your journey on LinkedIn and how did you develop this uh, skill of networking on LinkedIn? Because a lot of people still view LinkedIn as, uh, you know, online resume, posting site and whatnot. So, um, and it takes a lot of time to figure things out on LinkedIn. So tell us a little bit about your journey on LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. So I had the same impression as you. I only went on LinkedIn when I needed to search for a career opportunity. and with my um, second daughter, um, I made the tough choice to not go back to the corporate world and focus on granola grown. And so that was almost two years ago. And so it's been almost two years. I logged on to LinkedIn with the purpose of focusing on my business and I was clueless. <laughs> and uh, so that's how I started out was just being clueless and being open to what it had to offer. And what I learned very quickly is um, just creating authentic, genuine videos, content, you know, providing value to others through video. And for me, that's where I have found the most success. And, and again, it's all about experimenting and seeing what works for you. But, um, you know, getting on video, just a big disclaimer, I, I was extremely uncomfortable. I, I am actually the one that literally runs away from the video with family. <laughs> so when I told them I was going to start creating video, they're like, really mom, you like that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. And, and so it's just getting out of your comfort zone and, and experimenting and seeing what works, you know, and what's resonating with people while the whole time being you and I know that sounds so simple um, but as you know you grow and even me right now you know I've, I'm now taking on speaking engagements and I've just started writing a book and so as you take these different pivots if initially you started out authentically you 
you're good. Like you don't have to try to pretend to be anything, you know? So, so just being authentic and providing value. And, um, it was actually shocking when I did go back, I've created over 200 videos on LinkedIn, which is blows my own mind. I'm I'm now not that I would recommend going looking at the first hundred (laughs) (laughs) because I have grown a lot and still have a lot of room to grow. But, um, that's just been my, my journey on LinkedIn is, is, you know, looking at those again, like-minded folks and what are they doing? What's working for them and and not so much copying them, but seeing, you know, taking your spin on that and, um, and creating your own. Awesome. Uh, and brought up this point about authenticity, which I think uh, is is uh, is actually uh, more prevalent on LinkedIn. But uh, a lot of other platforms, uh, social media platforms, are moving towards that. Have you considered signing on on say Instagram because you know you are in food business and Instagram tends to be really uh, you know it, it lines well with the uh, food business or you know uh, fashion yes. these type of sort of consumer goods. Yes. Yes, I've considered it. I have not ventured into that yet. And uh-huh. and I I know and understand there are strategies and ways to accomplish this. My hesitation is time. Uh-huh. And and so I know that you can repurpose the same content. I understand that, but back to creating those meaningful connections and quality I'm not sure if I could pull that off and, and, and maybe I can. So that's something for me to learn maybe the next time we chat. <laughs> so I'm open to it. I haven't done that yet though. But I mean, um, I'm on uh, Instagram as well, but uh, I feel the authenticity is actually quite, uh, I will say, it's not at the level uh, that it is on LinkedIn because, you know, a lot of people post pictures and, um, and I personally know a few people who are, you know, uh, who are not who they say they are on Instagram, but you know, on, on LinkedIn, it's, it's, a, it's a different story. So uh, I think you, know, you made a very good choice to stick with LinkedIn. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now let's talk about Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just said time will tell. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. So now uh, let's talk about uh, entrepreneurship being a female because, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of females are coming into entrepreneurship, but it's still not proportional. Like, you know, still, um, women still are not at the, uh, you know, the same number of, um, uh, how, how can I say it? Like, it's not 50-50 divide between males and females. So can you tell us uh, why that is according to you? Oh, well, I think it's just the culture that we've been used to, you know, and, and uh, this is quite an understatement to say that things have definitely changed. And we are, as women, figuring it out now and, and have been. And so through us sharing our experiences and our stories, I think we're going to see a whole lot more of that. So not taking your typical, you know, what we're used to seeing is the CEO on here are all the ways we're successful. Well, let's take a flip on that and let's, let's address our failures and how, you know, as women, even, you know, every day is going to look different. And, and I am all about progression over perfection because I fail every day in very small ways and bigger ways and, and just knowing that that's okay. And, um, and so we're just trying to do it all. And, and it's difficult in the reality of it. Cause you know, you want to raise your children, you know, we have that, that nurturing side of us and we want to, and, and, you know, in my humble opinion, I think that we should, you know, and so I'm trying to balance it all. And, and the truth of it is, is there's really not a, a true balance every single day. You know, some days you're going to focus more on family and the next day you're going to focus more on your business, you know? So, um, so I think it's just coping with the realness of it and, and just knowing that it's okay. And, and just sharing those stories because a lot of, 
us women, we don't know that. We just see the, you know, the surface and, oh, here's our success story. Well, no, let's share the real stories. And so I think the more that, I think we have been doing that. I think the more that we do that, we share and we provide our tips and just supporting one another. Um, I think, you know, together is better. And I think that once we really own that we will see more of it and yeah. so yeah. Um, yeah that's for sure that's for sure uh, now let's talk about your uh, your uh, mentorship uh, moment to moment faith uh, can you tell us a little bit about that yeah absolutely so that is really anchored into how i get through my everyday you know speaking of sharing stories and experiences to to help others um I, I had a, a moment, a spiritual moment, and maybe we can talk about that at a different time, but I had, and um, I was, it was during a marathon, and I saw this, I had hit a wall, and I felt like I had, I could not go any further, like physically, emotionally, everything, I was drained, and then I looked up, and I saw the Philippians 4.13 scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and it was at that moment I thought, yes, I can. I can finish this race and I can do anything else that's in front of me. And it just, that scripture reminds me every single day from moment to moment because, you know, it could be from something as seemingly small as the dog getting sick in the morning to something more traumatic like a separation or something even more traumatic than that it's you know because sometimes those smaller moments can break us so it's that moment to moment faith that gets us through each moment and just taking a breath and just knowing like was you talked about earlier you got you come this far you can keep going moment to moment and so that's that's i'm really excited to to spread that message more that's great. That's great. And so, um, does that does your faith uh, help you uh, stay motivated, uh, uh, or or um, do you draw on other uh, inspirations uh, as well? Yes. Yeah, so that is my internal compass. I mean, it is my GPS and how it guides me every day. And it's not easy, and it's not perfect. And a lot of times, we you know sometimes as Christians. People are like, oh, you're a Christian and you did that or, you know, we'd still make mistakes, you know. And so so that is my anchor in getting through everything. Um, but my family is everything and and providing the best life possible for them is a huge reminder and motivator to get through and and, you know, push through whatever that is that I feel, you know, in that defeating moment. Oh, how am I going to accomplish this? I just think of them and, you know, and, and then even, you know, my dad, you know, we want to make our parents proud and it's just an, that's a personal thing. It's not coming from my dad, but just, yeah. you know, he it did so much for me growing up. I want to, you know, um, show him the same. And, and so those are huge motivators for me and, and giving back. Um, actually, I will just mention that, you know, granola grown, that is the bigger mission. I want to actually donate my granola to um, school breakfast programs. And so I'm not there yet, but that's a huge motivator because I will get there. And, um, and so remembering that and staying focused on that bigger picture helps me to push through um, with everything related to granola grown. That's great. That's great. Awesome. We, are, we are rooting for you for, for sure. Um, now, uh, do you include your motivation, your faith in, your, in the content that you produce as well? Or that's uh, totally fine? I do. I do. I don't try to, um, you know, put too much of anything out there. I think it's, you know, it's bold enough, if that makes sense. But I also, I want people, I want it to be received. So I don't want to overdo that. And, um, and, and really, and truly, I don't do that on a regular day basis either, either, you know, and so I'm, I'm constantly talking and praying with my friends and family, but um, I don't, you know, for lack of better phrases, put it right in their face all the time either, you know? And so I feel that through actions, they'll see that. I don't need to use my words all the time um, for that. And so, um, but yes, I definitely have spent, which was a big 
big, tough decision to not go back to the corporate world. Not that you can't accomplish this in the corporate world, but I, I strived and have achieved to align my personal and professional values. And that's a non-negotiable for me. So I definitely keep them aligned and you will see both in, in my personal and professional content and everyday life. Great. So, uh, you know, you have produced 200 videos, as you said, and how do you figure out what, uh, what to say, what kind of video do you want to produce today? Uh, because, uh, you know, trust me, like I, I, I go through this myself and it's kind of, you know, hard to come up with new ideas after maybe a week or so, you know, you're like, okay, what do I <laughs> yeah, there are a few different things. Um, you know, I think once you get in the mindset that you're going to be creating content, you allow your mind to be more open to picking up on things. You, you tend to like a trip to the dentist office you start to realize different small moments like, Oh, wow. You know, that's something to reflect on. So I know that sounds, you know, but, but once you're in that mindset of creating content, um, you'll start noticing more things to talk about. And, um, a good friend, Amy Perkins actually just shared with me that she just wakes up and she lets God lead her in what she's going to say. So just, listening, being open to that and, and writing everything down and, you know, and it's all about your environment too. So surround yourself in a positive way. Um, like for me being outside, I, I really genuinely am an outdoor person. And so being outside, just walking around my yard, um, reading a book, even in, with my children, but just writing it all down as we think of it. And you can erase it. You don't have to use it all, but just write it down just in case you could make it relatable if it resonates with you. That's awesome. And um, how often do you produce the content? So I am probably the worst example <laughs> to go by because the reality of my day is, you know, some days I'm able to devote um, the support and time I desire on LinkedIn and then some days I don't even log on, you know, and I know as far as the LinkedIn algorithms, that's a no, no. And, you know, cause it picks up on your consistency. So um, I can give you all the things that you're supposed to do, um, but I don't follow them as much as I should. Um, so, you know, it, it varies for me, unfortunately, but I know that's just the phase that I'm in right now and that won't be forever. So, so I think I will get to a point where, you know, I'm able to consistently do something daily and um, I go through that sometimes. So like this week I posted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I may not post on Thursday and Friday and the next week I may post every day and then I may take a week off. So I'm probably the worst example <laughs> To, to look to, um, but you know, you just make it work for, for what you have in your day. And that's where I'm at right now. Great. And in terms of, you know, how do you produce your videos? A lot of people have different ideas. They say, you know, just use your cell phone, make it more authentic. Or some people say, you know, have professional lighting and, and cameras and whatnot. So what is your take on that? You know, and I may, I may change. And, and again, it's about experimenting. I have experimented with different things. And for me, it, it just is more natural um, when I'm outside and just with my phone. And I do have a very you know, inexpensive phone stand. So if I need to, you know, I, I, you know, you can really feel the energy more sometimes when you do use your hands and, and all of that. And um, so I just keep it very simple and short and meaningful. And um, yes. I've, I've tried different things. I keep going back to that. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. Uh, it has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for sharing your story, your experience. Uh, is there anything else that you may want to share uh, with the audience before we go, um, before we wrap up? Yeah, just, you know, keep going, keep growing through each obstacle and um, just know that you're not alone. We're all going through this together. Yes. And it's been a genuine pleasure speaking with you more today. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, you're most welcome. Now, before uh, we actually wrap up, can you let us know how people can reach out your company uh, website and, uh, you know, how they can taste your granola? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. There are a few different options. Um, I'm actually, you caught me at an interesting time because I'm building a separate website now. So, 
you know, to be updated, it will be amberp.com. So amber, P-E-A-Y.com. Um, but for right now, in the meantime, just on LinkedIn, just reach out and send me a message. And I would love to connect and get to know and support each of you better. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming us today. And uh, I hope to have you again on the, on the show. Yes. I would love to. Thank you so much for your good energy. And you've made it a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that's all for now. Until next time. And if you are an existing or an aspiring tech entrepreneur, then I invite you to check out my new online workshop, Bootstrapping Your Tech Startup Dreams. Go to bootstraptechstartup.com and sign up for free. I want to make sure that more successful and sound decisions are made every day in your tech projects. Let's start finding solutions to your problems. So go to bootstraptechstartup.com and I look forward to helping you with your tech projects. If you want more engaging videos and insightful interviews with industry's thought leaders, then check out other videos we have picked for you. The link is right there. And if you want to be notified about our new content, please do consider subscribing to our channel.